What's up and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. Um, I've been pretty under the weather for a little bit, was feeling kind of really bad. Now I'm sort of back to normal and here we are. So I got a few videos already planned and in the works. Um, I should be back to a regular upload schedule and getting videos out for you guys. So that's great. Also, let me know down in the comments below if you guys want some lives uh, reacting to stuff like behind the scenes stuff. I personally really love watching that stuff. And a lot of information I feel like has been coming out recently about like working on volumes, especially with like The Mandalorian being out and um, a couple of other movies being done now with volume stuff uh, or volume sets. I really love that stuff and I love looking at the behind the scenes. So if you guys would like that too and you want me to kind of comment along and react to some stuff, I'd be down to do that. So like I said, let me know down in the comments and we can definitely get that going. All right. So this week we're covering the depth map, which is one of the coolest new features in DaVinci Resolve 18. I covered it in my previous video, which was the new features of DaVinci Resolve 18. I think it's really amazing and it's a great tool to use. It has some really cool uses, so I'll be showing you guys two uses today um, that I think are really cool and that you can implement in your own videos. Obviously there are a lot more, but these are just two really simple, really fast, cool uses for this tool. And I'm really curious to see what else it gets used for and what People, how people start implementing it into their workflows. Now, just a heads up, this does require the studio version of Resolve, and the reason for that is because it uses the neural engine in DaVinci Resolve 18, so you do need the studio version for that. Obviously, you can still mess around with it, even if you have the free version, it'll just watermark the footage, but it's still really cool to see what it does, and this might be one of the things that persuades you to update to the studio version. Another thing, too, is that this effect is pretty slow right now. I have a feeling that Resolve is gonna try to speed this effect up once it, once Resolve 18 is out of beta, but for right now, it is really processor intensive. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second when I apply it to the footage. It does take a while to pop up and kind of do its thing, so I have a feeling they're gonna try to speed that up, but right now, Resolve 18 is still in beta. I did ask around though, and it seems like everybody's having the same common experience with it being pretty slow, so I feel like that's just a common part of beta right now. Anyway, Let's jump into Resolve real quick and I'll show you how to use depth map. All right, so I'm gonna show you two different ways to use this. One is gonna be on the edit page and the other is gonna be on the color page. You can use it on both, it's just a slightly different application. So let's start on the color page. I'll drag depth map over and then attach it to the chain. Now, you'll see my image turn black and white, but that's because of the setting here that says depth map preview. So this is showing me what Resolve came up with using the neural engine and my footage. For some background to what we're gonna do, let's first talk about masks. In Resolve, when you apply a mask, you'll usually see it divides the image into white, black, or gray areas. The white essentially shows what's being affected. Black areas you can think of as transparent or not selected, and gray is some measure of both, so it's almost like an opacity slider in a Adobe if you've ever worked with Adobe products. So here, we don't really have pure white in this image. The people in the shot are selected, but it's a gray color, so it's not as good of a selection as I'd want. That's where all of these settings on the side come into play. So with depth map, you can go in and alter the parameters that Resolve is using. Now you might have seen how slow this was to come up when I first dragged this effect out onto the node tree. That's what I was talking about earlier when I said it's pretty, in it's a pretty intensive effect to use. I'm sure they're working on speeding that up, and I'm sure the release version will probably be much more optimized but for now it's pretty slow so for now working through this what i'm going to do is drop the quality of the depth map up here from better to faster it changed a bit on the preview but not too much for what we're going to do now on the color page this effect is amazing for creating separation and splitting your subject from the background if i turn this note off let's say maybe i want to bring my subjects out a little bit more so they don't blend into the background so much or maybe I just wanna add an effect, but only target them specifically. Easy enough with depth map, so let's turn it back on. The one thing we wanna do before we make any changes though is to get a solid selection. If I disable the preview right now, and remember our image was still gray in a lot of areas, and let's do something extreme so you can see it, like bump up offset, by quite a bit, you can see our entire image is still being affected. It's not just hitting our talent, it's also brightening up the background. So let's reset and go back to our depth map. Enable the preview again, and also enable this next option here, which is adjust map levels. So we have a far limit, a near limit, and gamma. Right now, let's just mess with the far and near. The far limit will affect the, your background, and your near limit will affect what's going on in your foreground. So in this case, if I take the far limit and start moving 
moving it up, you'll see the background gets black. That's what we want, so we can exclude the background. If I pull back near limit, our talent in the foreground are now white on our map, so we know they're being selected and the background is out. So if I disable preview here and we go to the next node, there's actually one last thing to do before we make our changes. Make sure you take the mask output and connect it to the node, the next node. You'll see it gives you this little key indicator now. So if we take offset now and raise it up just for example here, you'll see it's just affecting our talent in the front, in the foreground. Okay, so that's great. Let's take it one step further though and let's add a parallel node here and let's drag our key output again to the new node. Uh, but this time we'll go into our key here and hit invert. It'll show you the preview. We now have the background selected because it's white now and our talent is not selected because we inverted the key. That's really cool now. I can make changes on my parallel node here. We have a nicely keyed out background and foreground with very minimal time spent. The neural engine easily separated out this footage. All I had to do was make a few key adjustments and done. I didn't have to make it a mask and I didn't have to track it through the clip or anything like that, which is really helpful. All right, so let me show you how to use this on the edit page in a really cool way. But right before I do, if you've enjoyed this video so far and you've learned something and you haven't hit the subscribe button, then please hit that subscribe button and leave a like on this video. It really helps me out a lot on the channel to be able to keep making videos. I really appreciate all of you that are watching and those that have already hit subscribe. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, so here we are on the edit page. We'll have to apply the effect directly from here on the footage. But the cool bit about this is that it makes adding things like titles or background effects to your footage really easy. So here we are on the edit page and what I'll do is duplicate this video by holding the alt key and just dragging it up. We want to do this so we still have the background behind what's being keyed out. In the middle, I've left some space for the effect that I want to add. Now for you, this could be a title or anything you want, really. I'm going to add this really cool matrix background. This will make it look like these people are having a conversation while inside of the matrix. Also, by the way, you can also get these effects yourself from Motion VFX if you search it on, on Google. Uh, they have a bunch of really great motion effects and titles. They are not sponsoring this video at all, but they do really have some pretty cool things on their website. Uh, if you need assets on there or you need quick titles and don't have the time to create your own title packs and things like that. All right, so first let's add depth map back to this video layer on top. If your effects panel is closed, you can just come up here uh, in the top corner and hit effects. It'll open up the panel. Make sure you're on open effects here. Let's look for depth map and I'll just drag it onto the footage. Now on the edit page, in order to mess with the settings, you'll have to open up the inspector. Again, if it's not visible for you, just come up in the corner and click on inspector. Then go over to the effects tab and you'll see the same settings as before on the color page. So we'll drop the quality to faster again, just to speed things up for us while we're working on this. I'll enable map levels and pull up the far limit and bring down the near limit again until we have a pretty good selection for what we want to do here. All right, so there we go. So click off depth map preview so we can see the video again. Now I'll go back over to titles here and drag my matrix background over to the video layer two so that it's showing behind our video three layer footage. For this, if I go to settings and use the add composite mode two, I think that looks a lot better and maybe turn down the opacity slightly just to kind of blend it into the background and the scene of what's going on here. And there we go. So our matrix background is coming in behind our talent, which I think looks really cool. No king required, no using fusion. Obviously you can do this with titles too. So if you wanted to animate a really big title behind them, uh, let's say then you can do that and you don't have to create mass or key them out frame by frame. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave it for now. Like I talked about in my DaVinci Resolve 18 new features video, I think AI is gonna become a much greater part of our editing and color grading uh, process. I'm excited to see where that goes for the future. I think there'll be some really cool uses for it. The more AI can guess what we want to do, the faster that'll speed up our process. I'm still waiting for them to release an AI version that's pretty accurate for rotoscoping which is just a pain if you've ever done it in After Effects or any other program. So I'm looking forward to the day when that happens. Let me know down in the comments below if you've used this tool and how you've implemented it in your workflow, or if you've seen other really cool uses for it. And let's talk filmmaking. And until next time, go out there and create something. La vedere. I can't get